One Formula One team above all others has been dominating the headlines this summer. It's the Alpha Tauri team, of course, and its raft of driver changes. First, Daniel Ricciardo replaced World Formula E world champion Nick De Vries at the wheel of the AT04. And then, after a crash at the Dutch Grand Prix, Super Formula driver Liam Lawson made an unexpected race debut at Zandvoort. But the car both Ricciardo and Lawson found themselves behind the wheel of is more than a little bit of a handful. In fact, from the very start of the season, the AT04 has been a major challenge. Just listen to what team boss Franz Tost had to say about it right at the start of the year. The engineers tell me that uh, we make uh, some good progress, but I don't trust them anymore. I just want to see the lap time because this is the only thing which counts. Not enough downforce, therefore the car is unstable under braking, overheating the rear tires, washing out at the apex, bad traction, everything what you need to do a good lap time. Well, incredibly strong words there from Franz Tost. An awful lot of pressure and emphasis placed on the team's engineers to fix the problems with the car and those fixes came pretty quickly starting at the Miami Grand Prix. There are a number of detailed changes on the car but let's listen to the team themselves explaining those initial raft of upgrades to the ATO4. Uh, the first change is on the, on the front wing, on the, the connection between the flap elements and the, um, uh, the winglet. Mm -hmm. We have like a, a different geometry to create more outwash so the scope of this change is to really be able to like send as many airflow outside of the car mm -hmm. to uh, help the floor uh, flow structure, which is something that goes uh, against the spirit of the regulations, which is the one to contain the, the car flow and the wake of the car, but which is something which is efficient to find to find performance and which is a solution that most of the teams are, are working on. Uh, another change we brought is on the mirror area where um, we have a different geometry, which is meant to improve the flow structure on the top bodywork. Well, let's take a look at some of those upgrades in a little bit more detail. The team brought more packages to the car through the season, but some of the details I wanted to take a look at will go right back to pre-season testing. Take a look here on this photo I took of the floor of the AT04. You've got this bridged section, almost a viaduct-like section, on the leading edge of the floor along here and you've got those sort of arched sections there but you've also got this strange wire linking each of the arches together now a lot of people were asking at the start of the season what would that what's the aerodynamic purpose of that wire what's it all about well nothing to do with aerodynamics at all actually it's just to make sure the edge of the floor remains within the rules set by the technical regulations it's a legality wire if you like sometimes called a cheese wire but in this situation, these arches, this suggests that there was a really complex bit of detail under this big side impact structure housing on the side of the floor. But Alpha Tauri found that it didn't really work as they expected. And they, made, they played down this change, but this is a pretty major change to the car because in Miami, that section had pretty much disappeared. No arch section at all. And it's a conventional floor edge once more. And that's something that would have taken an awful lot of work to change for the team. But this, suggest, this shows the direction changes that they had to make with this car to get it to work. And later in the season, we got a little bit of a look at the floor of the Alpha Tauri from the rear. And this is something the teams don't really like us to look at, but I thought we'd take a look anyway. You can see a few nice little details. Some of the sculpting around the underside of the gearbox is really nice and you can see this little lipped section at the base of the floor. This is such a big area of development for the team so they don't really like us taking too close a look at it. So here is the Alpha Tauri to take a look at. It's really hard to evaluate what works and what doesn't I and mean, they've made so many changes here to that section of the car as well. Another area of the car that Alpha Tauri has been playing with an awful lot it sounds quite minor, but it's the rear view mirrors. Now you can see the original specification in this shot here that we saw a little bit earlier. Take a look at the rear view mirror design here. You can see these three vertical sections, these sticky uppy bits in the wake of the main mirror housing. And then you can see also, you can see this wing shaped section on the mirror support itself. That's all to do with reducing drag of the mirror. But to take a closer look at what effect changing the mirrors around has, well, let's hear from the team themselves. 
They have the effect of uh, improving the flow structure that goes to the rear, the rear suspension okay. and the rear part of, of, of the floor. Okay. So that's, that's the area that is obviously very sensitive for, for performance. So small modifications in that area uh, are, are helping the rear of the car to, to work better. Um, it's not only about adding load, it's also uh, about adding load in certain conditions, uh, for example in yaw and roll. So it's like making the car a little bit more consistent when, when, it, when it moves in, uh, in the corners. Really interesting stuff and that work hasn't stopped yet. Going into Monza, the team introduced another specification of mirror. Again, the only one vertical element remains on the mirror support and they've gone for a full sort of cup shape around the edge of the mirror. Again, trying to reduce that aerodynamic drag and manage the airflow over the rear of the bodywork. But even with all of these upgrades on the car, it's fair to say that the car's performance hasn't evolved the way the team would have hoped. Certainly Franz Tost would have hoped. Now this graph is a development rate graph. So you've got Red Bull at the top and this graph shows the gap from team, that teams have to Red Bull and how they've evolved their car through the season. So take a look at McLaren. The green dot here denotes where they started the season at the Bahrain Grand Prix. And then the white dot at the other end here, that denotes where they were at the Belgian Grand Prix. So pretty much now, essentially. And you can see McLaren, fantastic development rate, getting much, much closer to Red Bull Racing. But look down here at the bottom of the Constructors' Championship and the bottom of our graph, sadly, the Alpha Tauri. Their green dot is actually closer to Red Bull at the start of the year than it is now. Or in other words, the development of the Alpha Tauri is going backwards. The car is actually getting worse and not better. And that fact alone has led to some people saying that the single biggest upgrade to the Alpha, Alpha Tauri AT04 is the racing drivers that sit in it. Unexpectedly, in the middle of the season, Nick de Vries was replaced by an old time Red Bull friend. Daniel Ricciardo, the Australian driver, took the wheel of the Alpha Tauri. Hugely popular move for many of the fans, but on the face of it, quite a significant technical challenge because don't forget the Alpha Tauri 8004 was designed with Yuki Tsunoda in mind. And look at the height difference between the Japanese driver and the Australian. It's pretty significant. Now, on the face of it, you'd have expected that a car designed around this driver couldn't be driven by a driver like Daniel Ricciardo. And the only reason that Ricciardo was able to jump into that car and drive it comfortably was the fact that Pierre Gasly was a member of that team when the 8004 was in development, and he's only two centimetres shorter than the Australian. So that was a bit of luck for Alpha Tauri. And in fact, it's, it's Yuki Tsunoda who the car has to be specially adapted to. In the cockpit, there's a, essentially some pedal extensions, a bit like a arrive and drive go-kart to make sure the Japanese driver can be comfortable in a good seating position from an aerodynamic point of view as well. So they made that change and it looked like that change was gonna last for the season. And then we got to Zandvoort. Daniel Ricciardo hit the wall in free practice and called up from Super Formula Duty was this man, Liam Lawson, the Super Formula driver jumped into the cockpit unexpectedly in Zandvoort. And that seat fitting gave us quite a nice look underneath the bodywork of the AT04 and showed us a few details that we don't normally get to get a good look at. Just look here, you can see this triangular structure on the top of the side pod. That structure there is actually manufactured by Red Bull Racing and is common to all cars. It's the upper side impact structure. We can't have to talk about the lower structure, but we never talk about the upper structure. Then over here, you can just see the top edge of the cooling system layout and then some of the extra coolers around the rear of the power unit. Now you can see where the airflow goes from the airbox over this side. You've got this split channel. So the air flows into the airbox above the driver's head. Now this lower section, that goes into the, v the V6 Honda combustion engine, whereas this upper segment goes into a cooler above the gearbox. So it's quite an interesting layout for the car as well. So then let's look at the most recent upgrades going into Monza. And the biggest story here is all about the rear wing. This is the rear wing that the team had at the Belgian Grand Prix. And we thought initially this was their low drag package, slightly dished lower section of the wing. And look at this section here with a cutout at the back, very small section, not very steep wing at all. Well, going into the Dutch Grand Prix is a wing we'd seen already from the team. 
with this really interesting cutout section at the back, almost two elements, very trend setting design this, a number of teams copying this layout, bit of an area of exploitation, but at Monza, the wing got even flatter, <laughs> barely a section here as the team tried to optimize their top speed along the top straight at their what is now their home race after the cancellation of the Grand Prix in Imola. It does appear to be working and the Alpha Tauri is one of the fastest cars in a straight line this season, though it's not really shown it up at every single track. So whether all of these upgrades and all of these packages really work for Alpha Tauri, it's not entirely clear to see. But a huge amount of work needs to be done by the team just so Franz Tost isn't so disappointed. And its drivers, be it Daniel Ricciardo, Nick De Vries, Liam Lawson or Yuki Sonoda, have a real opportunity of showing what they can do on track.